Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this one, I wanted to tackle a few subscriber requests that we have around the group by method in Pandas. They're asking, how can we conditionally do different functions on other columns based on a column value? For example, say we have the data that looks like this, where we have an order ID column, a sales amount, and an order type. However, we want to go through and find where order IDs are the same, such as this entry right here of 4702, do a sum of the sales amount and concatenate two strings of order type. That way we can view one entry for this order ID, see a total amount, and see that it was a downgrade and an upsell. Let's see how we can do that and power up our group by function in Pandas. Let's get started. Starting out, we'll be using Pandas, so go ahead and import that. If you don't have this installed, go ahead and pip install it. Then we can read in our data frame as usual. So we can read Excel and then pass in the path to our Excel workbook. Mine is called order history.xlsx. So order history.xlsx. Going back and viewing that workbook, we see that the order IDs are all over the place. So let's go ahead and sort those. We'll do that by saying df is equal to df sort values. Then we'll say by, and then we'll do order ID. Then we'll pass in a keyword argument of ascending and set this equal to true. Finally, we'll print df.head to view the first five lines and make sure that we've read this in successfully. Opening up a terminal or a PowerShell, we'll say Python and then execute our script. Once we do that, we see that our order IDs are now ascending and value. All right, great. So we have our data read in and now we can get to simplifying our data frame. So remember what we're trying to do is simplify all of our data to where if the order ID is the same, we want to combine or sum this column here and then concatenate this column here. Let's get started doing that. We'll say simplified DF will be equal to our data source of data frame dot group by and here we could pass in multiple columns or just one our use case means that we just need this order id column and this is great so far however we need to determine what happens to the other columns and since we want multiple operations to happen what we can use is a function called dot agg this function is short for aggregate and pretty much this is what we want to happen with the other columns we can use a dictionary to do that. We'll say ag functions, and then we'll create that dictionary. And what this takes in is a column heading. So we'll say sales amount, and then the function that we want to apply to that column. So here we're doing a summation and we can just pass in sum. For our second one, we have a little bit more complex of an example. We have order type and this, will actually be a function. What we're doing here is concatenating. So we'll use a dot join and let's add in a comma and a space after each one. So we'll say comma space and then dot join. Getting this level of control with a group by function is pretty awesome to have in your toolkit. We could also pass in a list here instead of just one value. So if we wanted a sum and also a mean, we could do it. In this example, we'll just use a sum because that's all we need, but in your own case, you may need more. Now that we have these ag functions, let's go ahead and pass it to the ag method down here. Great, I'm doing this in multiple lines here because I feel like it's easier to teach. However, you could just copy this right here and paste it within your ag function to get rid of this variable completely. Great, so now we have our simplified DF and if we wanted to, we could just write it to Excel. So we could say simplify DF to Excel and then pass in a file path. We'll say simplified order history dot XLSX. This will write it to your desktop and let's go ahead and view it. So we'll run our code and we'll open up this Excel simplified order history workbook right here. Now we see that we have entries where we have multiple order IDs 
and we have a concatenated string for the order type. The sales amount has been summed as well. Great, so we got to our solution, but let's take this one step farther. We'll go ahead and open our editor back up, and let's say that we only wanted the entries that had multiple items on the order. We can do a conditional index to get those. We'll say something like multiple item orders, and then we need to say simplified df, so we're accessing the data here, and then we can put in our condition inside of it. Our condition is where our field of order type, and then we can use a string method, so dot string dot contains, and we can pass in whatever string we want. In this case, we know that if multiple items are on the order, we're creating our data frame to include a comma in the order type. There's definitely a lot cleaner ways that you can do this, but for me, this works. Then we could say something like print multiple item orders. We'll save this and execute it. When we execute, we see that we got a permission denied, and this is common if we still have this workbook open. We'll go ahead and exit out of that, and then we'll save and execute again. This time, we get the result that we expect. We get only the entries by order ID where they have multiple items on the order. And that's it for this subscriber request. If you have any questions or comments about it, please let me know. If you have your own request that you want to make, please drop that in the comments and maybe I'll be able to do it in the next video. Until next time,